You always kind of hear myths of like, you turn down work so many times and people don't come back. But if I'm already working, I can't physically do two jobs at the same time. I think I've tried maybe when one job is finished at 7 p.m. and another job starts at 9, but that can be very dangerous. If you're driving, I wouldn't recommend. Just be realistic about what you can handle. I have a few times and it's been hard to because you sort of want to say yes to everything in case there's a gap. But um, what I try to do in those situations, there's been a couple of times recently where someone's got in touch with me, but I'm already working in the day and a bit in the evening. So just there's no physical time unless I don't sleep. Um, in those situations, I tend to think to myself, well, who else do I know that might be available and might do a good job? And I think that's paid dividends because I've helped a few other friends get jobs that way. And it always I always think it reflects well on yourself if you say, I'm not available, however, let me help you, I recommend these people. And then that person isn't left with no other options. I would turn down opportunities if I could not meet the demands of the client. Um, particularly with script or novel reading, there are times when people want uh, one week turnaround and uh, if I've promised work between people, I don't like to go back and say I cannot do this because I'm doing this because I think it's important to operate on a strictly first come first serve basis unless the work you're being offered could be so beneficial to the career to the point where you feel you have to take it on. Think about something before you accept it immediately and how you accept it, and whether you dive in or whether you can actually kind of negotiate more money. A lot of the time it's, they'll say this is their budget, but then you'll go, okay, no, like I can't justify that. And then they'll be like, okay, we actually can double the budget. And you're like, glad I asked. Because <laughs> I will just do whatever it takes to get you for as little as possible. And in the camera world, once you start doing too much video work, then you start getting typecast. No one wants to hire you in camera, especially in the, like, the big films. Because they're like, no, you're a video person, what are you trying to do? <laughs> There's a huge loyalty issue with, like, between the two. So I've turned down a lot of video work. At the end of the day, I want to be a TOP, and being a video assistant is not going to help me get there. I've turned down certain things because I don't agree with the ethics of a job or the ethics of a report. An artist that I work with was offered to write a song for an advert for the Navy and uh, which is an amazing opportunity for an up and coming artist. It's brilliant exposure, uh, an exposure that would really help to potentially catapult her into where she would like to be. And she turned it down. That is an example that I in incredibly admire. It's about, it's about ethics, really. Any small commercial client, there's none too big or too small. As long as their work is ethical, I would work with them.